Welcome back, everybody, to Take Two Podcast. I'm Brian, and I am joined by a fun chat that I'm going to have with today. Now, normally, you guys, you watch our show, we're, we're TV movies. We talk music. Sometimes we sing, if you want to call it that. But we don't get to talk to actual musicians on here very often. So I'm really pumped to talk to pageantry today. Pageantry, hello. How are you? Hi, I'm great, Brian. How are you? I'm doing well. Welcome to Take Two Podcast. Um, we used to do this shtick back in the day. We had an association with a pub nearby who had uh, live music. So we would go in and watch the live music and then just chat at the pub. So we would talk the brews that they got going on, and then we would talk with the musicians. And it was kind of like, this is fun, but these guys are music and us are TV or whatever. But we would somehow kind of bring them into our world. So I'm hoping we can do that to you today. We're going to talk about all your music, all your good stuff you got going on, but I'm going to force you to talk a little TV movies later on if that's okay. Yeah, I think I can handle it. So I'm good at talking, so we won't have a problem there. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. Okay. Let me extend the recording session time for another hour then just in case. All right. So biggest thing we got right now is Magnetic. That's your single that you just dropped back in October. Um, it's hot. I was doing a little bit of research and listened to it. I didn't realize that I was allowed to listen to it. I thought I was like doing something dirty there, but it's good. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. And I was like, this is great. We, we are, a mutual friend of ours connected us and I was like, yes, this is great. Tell me about it. Where did the song come from? And I know the song has a lot of meaning behind it, which I was really digging. Can you elaborate? Yeah, for sure. So um, I worked on the song with a good friend and producer here in Nashville in the pop realm named uh, Derlin. His name is Blake Stryker, but his alias is Derlin and um, love collaborating with him. But went into the session that day into the studio, always just starting off talking about like, what's on your mind? What, what do you want to write about today? And I had a girlfriend that I was talking to. She had been going through a relationship at the time, kind of dating around. And there was a guy that she really liked and kind of playing games like some people do in dating. And she had said, I don't know why he always is leaving me on red. And that's exactly the opening line of the song, you're leaving me on red. And that's kind of where the song spiraled out of that. And it kind of has more of a meaning behind it as you touched on by just how there aren't meaningful relationships that are being formed today. There's a mm -hmm. lot of people that are trying to find relationships or try to find what they describe as love when it's really just them hiding behind the screen or trying to be someone they're not or playing games and just adding all these complexities into the equation when it's not necessary. Like, why don't we go back to the standards of how you should be treated and the way that you expect to be treated. And that's really what all the songs about is just finding yourself worth knowing that you're not going to put up with the bullshit <laughs> that you see today and just really understanding what a true relationship is. Man, it, it's so weird. This it, 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 Literally last night I'm at work and a gentleman has been uh, sort of off and on talking with this young lady he met through one of the dating sites. I think that's the only way right now you can meet people almost. Yeah. And I said, you know, how's it going? And, and he said, ah, we're done. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. How'd she take it? And he was like, I don't know. I'm just going to ghost her. And I was like, you know, one text goes a long way. And he was like, okay, dad. And I was like, well, guilty on that. You know, I guess my age shows, but I think that speaks to what you're kind of talking about. We need to get to that certain point in our lives where you can at least text someone and say, Hey, I think I'm out at the very least to get that closure in a relationship, let alone find something more. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I just see so many situations and I mean, myself included with past things where everyone just treats it like so disposable. It's like, okay, well, there needs to be a true, genuine human connection too. Like we all have feelings. And like you said, there's no reason to just get up and go somebody. So sure. just trying to like reiterate that and kind of get it into people's head. Like we might have all these new forms of communication and to meet people, but what are you really trying to get at the end of the day? So exactly what you were saying <laughs> i love it that's awesome that's so cool um where can we find the song now where we can listen to it everywhere yeah so it's live on all streaming platforms all over the world um anywhere where you can buy stream listen to music you can find it so um i primarily am really active on spotify apple music so definitely check it out there and then um on instagram too you can find me and i always am putting up little videos and teasers and things like that and would love to connect with a lot of people that are interested in learning more about my art. Very cool. Guys, jump on there. We'll tag you on all of our socials. So any of our people, you can jump right in there, listen to that. Now for the next like two weeks though, I got to be honest, I'm listening to a lot of Christmas music. I've even turned off my podcast that I listen to. It's all Christmas music for me. Luckily, I can still listen to you. 
Yes, for sure. So um, love Christmas time. And of course, being an artist, you always have to have a Christmas song handy. So um, one of my favorite Christmas tunes that I did my own spin on a few years ago, uh, Tennessee Christmas. It's also live on all streaming platforms. So I'm actually based here in Nashville, Tennessee. So yeah. the song is pretty fitting. But uh, yeah, you can also check that out and add it to all of your shopping playlists, holiday party playlists, anything you need to get you in the spirit. Very cool. Will do 100%. Uh, you brought up Nashville. Uh, I've never been. We were supposed to go back in May for my brother's bachelor party. He just got married. But oh since boy. everything shut down, we didn't get to go. So that trip is like on hold, hold. So it's like every time I hear Nashville, I'm like, oh, it sounds so great. And I came so close to going. We'll get there eventually. Yeah, I have to say the one thing that I do appreciate about the shutdown with Nashville is there hasn't been many bachelorette and bachelor parties. So I live like right in the heart of the town where it's like literally a bunch of woo girls and like party buses going around oh, all the time. And like, everyone's like, that'd be a great place to live. And I'm like, it gets a little old after a while with all the visitors, but Hey, we appreciate the tourists too. So okay. well, <laughs> sorry, we're going to check that box eventually for you, but maybe while we're down there, I'll hit you up and you can show us like the non touristy sections. That would that would yeah, be, wild. Be, a, be a real local. <laughs> All right, let me rewind just a little bit, not too far back. How did you get your start in music? What was it about music that you thought, this is my career path. I'm good at this. I want to do this. Yeah, so uh, I come from a really musical family. I always tell people I believe I could sing before I could speak. <laughs> so my dad is actually a producer and an engineer in coming out of Charlotte, North Carolina. So when I was growing up, we had a recording studio in the Charlotte area and he was also in a touring band too. So I was around music my entire life. And funny story, my dad actually didn't want me to go into music at all. He was always like, I wanted her to find her own path, do her own thing. And my mom was the one who really pushed me, not wanting me to be shy, wanting me to be on stage. And as soon as I could grab my first microphone, which was at three years old, I knew I was supposed to sing and bring people joy through the gift of song. So I uh, started out as an early age. And then as I got older, when my dad would perform and tour around the Southeast, I would get the opportunity sometimes to sing with him and his band. And being in the studio, kind of my after school activities, they all consisted of something with music. If it were laying down background vocals in the studio for a project he was oh, wow. working on, or being um, on stage, I did a lot of musical theater too. So it was just in my blood. And I knew early on from my first trip to Nashville as a young girl that it was somewhere in my cards to end up here. So um, when I finished school, college, I moved here like a week later and haven't looked back since. So just trying to grind it out like everyone else here that's so talented. Uh, you went to USC, right? Southern Cal? Yeah. Or Cal no, excuse me, Southern, Southern Carolina. Cal the real, yeah, the real USC, South Carolina. <laughs> uh, and the one thing, uh, my brother actually went to school in Myrtle Beach. Second time I brought up my brother, random. Um, right. But uh, the one thing that we argue, you know, I'm based out of Maryland, is probably the second best flag in the union would be South Carolina's. Yeah, I have to agree. I mean, the crescent moon and palmetto tree, you can't go wrong with it. And blue's my favorite color. So I, I love it too. Stay true to it. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. So growing up, who, who'd you listen to? Who are your inspirations musically? Yeah, so um, being really heavily influenced by everything that my dad was doing musically, um, I started in early age listening to Motown. Ooh. So everything from uh, Aretha Franklin to uh, the Jackson 5 to the Temptations, that was really where a lot of my influence came from. And I really think it's some of the best music. And I think it history repeats itself. And you definitely find elements of Motown coming back in music today, for example, like Bruno Mars. So definitely love doing any kind of musical stuff. Sorry, I have a dog here. <laughs> really cool. A little bit of background music. Uh, but yeah, so love Motown and anything that I can incorporate that with my music today, I still do with Motown as well. So that's awesome. So if I said, okay, I've got any artist out there, right? Any single one. Yes is the answer you get to collaborate with. Who would you choose? Definitely Alicia Keys, 100%. Ooh, nice. So, yeah, she's one artist that I think has just remained timeless through all of her years, even really starting out really young. And actually, at the beginning of quarantine, I started really reading a lot because I had a lot more time to do things that I didn't have time before. And she had... Uh, just released a book and I read her biography and it really made me respect her more. She's um, very true to who she is as a person, very true to her art and 
also very true to showing vulnerability, which I think is really important to anyone who is an artist. Um, the more vulnerability you show, the more authentic you can become and the more people can connect with your art as well. So definitely Alicia Keys uh, with her amazing piano playing and her vocals for sure. <laughs> That's awesome. I have to say, in, in looking at your social media a little bit in the past couple of days, um, authentic was a word that came to my mind. I was like, wow, th this girl's not putting up a facade. This is her. This is she's real. This is exactly who she wants to be because that's just who she is, is at least how it portrayed to me. So I was instantly attracted to you, your music, everything that you're doing because of that. So that's awesome that she's even an inspiration in that realm. Yeah, I think uh, as artists, it's really hard to find that place where you feel comfortable to show your mm -hmm. vulnerability. I know it took me a long time to do that and also takes you a long time to really be authentic and figure out, okay, who do I want to be as an artist? Like, I'm my own person, but my art can be totally different than who I am as a person. And it takes a lot of personal growth to figure out, okay, I'm ready for the world to see this and take it or leave it. You're going to like it or you're not, but it's authentic to me, so... <laughs> That's so awesome. That's so cool. All right, Ms. Pageantry, um, you mentioned musical theater. I'm going to use that. I want to talk to you. Um, how about some favorite? What, what are we binge watching right now? Everyone's at home just binging. Anything top in your list? So I honestly watch everything all across the spectrum on Netflix. Um, I know that they've recently done uh, this feature where you can shuffle, where it's like, let me watch something and it just like shuffles all of your options and you would have everything from uh, romantic comedies to just murder mystery documentaries and then all of the above. So um, there was a show that I recently watched called Love on the Spectrum, which is more of like the reality TV realm, which I don't watch too much reality TV, but this one was a little bit different and it definitely had a special place in my heart during this uncertain time. But it's about uh, kids with autism who are trying to figure out the dating world. And I guess it relates to everything we're talking about now, but dating just in any time in your young adult life is difficult, but then add something where there might be an hind a hindrance for you um, socially. And it's just like, wow, it really puts things into perspective, but mm -hmm. it's a really sweet show at the same time. And it definitely makes you sit back and think about how grateful you are, but also warms your heart too. So I definitely would suggest that if you need a laugh and uh, somewhat of a tearjerker too. <laughs> okay. And uh, throw me, what's your, what's your go-to Christmas movie to watch? Go-to Christmas movie. So I think it would have to be a Christmas story. That's nice. definitely a tradition in my house. Every Christmas Eve, we always watch um, a Christmas story. I think like on TBS or something, they always have it on repeat for 48 hours. So I probably watch it about 10 times over the Christmas holiday, but you can't get enough of Ralphie and you'll shoot your eye out. <laughs> Fantastic, good choice. Very nice, that's easily in my top three. Depending on the day, top number one as well. Okay, pageantry folks, you can find her music across all platforms, Apple Music, Spotify, et cetera. We're going to tag you on all our stuff and uh, maybe kind of sneak your songs in a couple of spots just to give them a little tidbits, if you don't mind. Yeah, uh, guys, for sure. Follow all of her socials, follow everything uh, to listen to her songs. And the new Christmas song, I, as soon as we hang up, I'm going to go listen to your Christmas song. I'm excited for it. For sure. Yeah, thanks. Of course. Yeah, anywhere that you can find music, definitely check it out. And as I said before, love connecting with people who really feel a connection with my music. So definitely shoot me a message and anything like that. And would love to hear your feedback and to tell you what I'm working on next too. Thank you so much for coming on Take Two. Yeah. Thanks, Brian. I appreciate it. Have a good evening.